Now let's discuss some of the vocabulary of inferential statistics. Just as a reminder, inferential statistics consist of methods for estimating and drawing conclusions about a large group based on the information in a smaller, hopefully representative group. The larger group is called a population. A population is the collection of all elements, persons, items, or data of interest in a particular study. And a parameter is a numerical summary of a population. A census is the collection of data from every element in the population. A sample is a subset of the population from which information is collected. And a statistic is a numerical summary of a sample. Let's look at a few examples. In each scenario, try to identify the sample and the population. A psychologist is concerned about the health of veterans returning from war. She examines 20 veterans and assesses whether they show signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. The sample is the 20 veterans, while the population would be all veterans. Next, a financial advisor would like to assess the effect of mergers on price earnings ratio. She collects data on 50 companies that recently underwent a merger. The sample is the 50 companies that recently underwent a merger, while the population would be all companies that recently underwent a merger. According to the Department of Transportation, 60% of all automobile passengers wear seat belts. This is based on a survey of 1,000 automobile passengers, of whom 600 wore seat belts. This is a sample of 1,000 passengers. The population would be all passengers. Finally, based on an experiment involving 68 students in a statistics class, a researcher concluded that students who eat a donut immediately before taking an exam score better than students who do not. The exam average for students who had a donut was 104 points. This is a sample of 68 students. The population would be all students. The average of 104 points comes from a sample and therefore is a statistic. If the results of a sample are not representative of the population, then the sample has bias. We want to avoid bias as much as possible. Good data collection can help. If you realize that the pool from which you choose your sample is not the intended population, you may need to revise your conclusion. Let me explain. Perhaps the psychologist is interested in all veterans, but selects a sample from a pool of Gulf War veterans then the population is Gulf War veterans and not all veterans. And in the seatbelt example, if the survey was conducted exclusively in the U.S., then the researcher should be specific in defining the population and clear in his or her summary. 60% of all U.S. passengers wore a seatbelt. We have a good foundation vocabulary for statistics. I think that we're ready for a little quiz. Take a look at this small spreadsheet with data about the 2011 BMW product line. First of all, what are the elements in the study? Remember, elements are specific entities about which information is collected. In this case, the information is collected on BMW models. What are the variables in the study? Recall that the variables are the characteristics of interest. In this case, they include body style, weight, and number of seats. Which of the variables is or are qualitative? Recall that a qualitative variable categorizes the elements. Body style categorizes the models. Which of the variables are quantitative? Weight and number of seats. And which of these is discrete? 
since we count to get the number of seats, number of seats is discrete. And since we measure to get weight, weight is continuous. Should we consider this a population or a sample? Since this is every BMW model from 2011, it's a population. And therefore, any summary would be a parameter. Here's a summary of the vocabulary that we've discussed so far. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.